So here we are post dyno and uh, a few things are clear. Um, well, I'm not going to make the event that I was uh, trying to hit um, just on how the dyno went. Um, the hope was if I could get through the dyno cleanly and we could get the car tuned and uh, everything street ready, uh, I could spend the next week after the dyno making the car look pretty, getting the finishing touches all dialed in. That didn't happen. Um, there's a couple things that happened during the dyno and just problems occurring with uh, kind of a new fresh build, uh, fast build, and teething problems on the dyno uh, that should have been taken care of ahead of time, but the car couldn't run well enough for those issues to actually present themselves. So let me show you what we found. The The first issue was uh, I wasn't able to connect all of the breathers um, as you're supposed to. So I have the valve cover breathers going into our intake and then I have a breather from the oil tank um, that comes up over onto this other side here. Uh, but there should be a breather that goes from the tank to the engine, and that's not present. So uh, that, coupled with the fact that uh, I overfilled our oil tank by uh, a not an insignificant amount, uh, roughly two quarts or so. Um, un again, trying to hurry, and I had the car jacked up, and uh, it wasn't registering the amount of oil on the dipstick, which, for posterity's sake, there's a little plug down here in the middle, and you insert a dipstick, and what it does is it comes down to just below where this uh, coupler is, between the bottom and the top of the oil tank. And for a dry sump tank, you want your oil level hot to be below this line because if it's above this line, uh, it starts to get into your breather assembly. So then you start spitting hot oil uh, into your breather lines, uh, into the lines that would normally go into your intake, stuff like that. Um, leading to what happened to us, which was uh, an overflow. Uh, with this catch can on, it was just puking oil, like by the court, out of this vent on top and all over uh, down underneath here, down on just basically everything in the engine bay, the, the heater lines, the oil lines, the header. Uh, it just made a terrible mess. Uh, that was just one of the problems. Uh, another problem we had is once it did finally get up to temp and, um, well, to go back a little bit further, the engine didn't want to run or idle, uh, when I did my initial startup and we eventually got it figured out that the firing order was wrong in the, uh, base map that we had selected for the Holly. Uh, why? I don't know. You would think that uh, uh, in general, the LS engines should have the same firing order. I don't know why it had changed, but two cylinders were out. So it just it ran like a dog and it didn't want to run very long or idle on its own. So once Jay got that figured out and it was able to idle, uh, immediately it sounded good, uh, sounded much better. But it could finally run long enough to get the coolant hot enough to open the thermostat on the front of the engine. And once it did, there was a ton of air in the lines because it hadn't opened before, which means the lines that run all the way up to the front, uh, up into our uh, radiator, still had tons of air, tons of bubbles and all that stuff. Uh, and none of that was purged. So when it finally did open up, uh, it just created hot spots and air pockets. And as soon as you have an air pocket in the engine, like in the heads or anything like that, it immediately creates steam. 
Uh, steam creates pressure, that pressure displaces water, and so you end up knocking out even more water of a short-filled system. So we started running into temp issues, we started having overflow issues, so um, I didn't have the hose here for the overflow, so it was just blasting steam and hot water all over the belts, all over everything that had just oiled down. And so then the belt started slipping and it was just like one problem after another, after another. Um, another issue we found was, um, I can't remember which bank it was. I think it's for uh, the odd bank, but the O2 sensor uh, is either wired wrong or the sensor is bad uh, because one side gives us real values for uh, uh, our AFRs or air fuel ratios. The other side is giving us weird, super high values, like 28, 30, whatever, um, you know, regardless of tuning and what have you. It's just, just reading crazy numbers. Uh, and so either A, the sensor is bad, and we can check that by swapping the sensor side to side, or B, the wiring is bad, and I'll need to uh, pull the secondary O2 harness and either... Uh, verify its pinout or replace that uh, that whole plug and um, a wiring harness with a new one. Um, but I still have to investigate that. Those were the really big problems for Dino Day, and that's why we had to cut our Dino time short. Um, uh, Jay was able to to get kind of a half tune in, so. Uh, it's fairly usable up to about 4,500 or so RPM. Uh, we did some baby pulls just to see what kind of power we're putting down with uh, uh, partial throttle and partial revs. And I mean, it's still putting down healthy numbers for, you know, kind of a half tune. I think we were in the 490s or whatever at the wheels. So um, a far cry from what it should make, but enough that I can get it on the street, tune it uh, when it is drivable, and uh, get through some of these teething issues before we go back. And now that things are kind of decided, I'm a little bit relieved uh, and a little bit disappointed. I'm not happy with the build as it was progressing. Some of that's just moving fast and breaking things, wasting money by you know blowing things up, uh, something that's not on video uh, but happened in the fray was somebody, and we won't mention my name here, uh, pinned the AC compressor harness incorrectly in the rush to get the wiring harness done and fried the compressor control board. So I had to order a replacement, but they don't replace just the control board, you have to order a whole new compressor. So that was a $2,000 mistake. Things like uh, trying to manage the ECU wiring or man you know, managing wiring on the car uh, and then figuring out that the Holly products absolutely require a hot wire all the time. They have a volatile memory. So if you leave the, the Holly Dominator or Terminator, whatever you're working with, uh, disconnected from the battery, it'll lose its tune, uh, which is crazy to me. Like all the ECUs I've worked with in the past uh, didn't have this problem. Um, so that's uh, something to consider if, if I ever need to disconnect the battery or uh, I put it on a power switch or something like that. If I leave it disconnected too long, it's just going to lose its tune. So I'll need to keep that handy. Other things... Uh, quality wise the the rear carpet um, stuck down too fast uh, uh, little bits here and there like I'm not the happiest with the um, the fit and finish on the dash and a lot of it's just between uh, Sean and I trying to lay this down it's not perfect and it's never going to be perfect for us we're not interior people like uh, to date, I've done one and a half of these, and Sean has done half of these. So between the two of us, we've done 
two of them successfully, question mark, uh, you know, as in they were in the car, but that's not going to be the same as having an interior guy do it or, you know, somebody who specializes interior getting, you know, all the last little wrinkles out. Will it do for a race car? Oh, yeah, but it's not a show car by any stretch. Um, when I put the body back on, uh, even though I had gone and done all the pre-fit, it still didn't quite line up the same. Um, I don't know. I don't know how or what moved, but things moved a little bit. So things that, uh, you know, little bits that had lined up previously just fine didn't anymore. Um, and it's just little things here, like on the door, uh, in the door jam, it's a little tight back here. Um, the, the door locks don't quite work like, you know, they had previously because it's either too tight or too loose. Um, you know, things like that, things that should have just worked didn't. I did get these carbon fiber bits on, which, I mean, at least that went nice. Uh, I had the side splitters on, but and they didn't fit on the dyno. So we had to remove them for dyno day. I'm going to have to go through and clean up the engine bay, especially on this side. Um, it's hard to tell now without any lights on, but it is just everything down in this corner is just covered with oil. Uh, a couple other things we discovered was uh, the air box needs to move forward by... Uh, probably at least an inch. Uh, again, some things that have changed either from engine mounts or uh, the body or body placement, but uh, the top of the air box used to clear the old body just fine. And with all the new body parts, it doesn't. You can see where it had rubbed right there. So the air box needs to move forward to clear the rear clamshell. Just by blitzing through the build, you end up making compromises you didn't want to make in order to finish a job. There's sort of opposing school of thoughts for, for this kind of thing, where one school of thought is just good enough to move on, and uh, another school of thought is as good as it can be, or at, to the highest quality you can before moving on. And I definitely don't want to be the former, and I would like to go faster than the latter would allow me. And I think the pace I had before we started this kind of crush to make our deadlines was a good place to be. So even though the car runs, and it does run, um, and I can drive it, there's a few things that we need to address to make it better, uh, to make it where I think it should be. Some of these are to do with the changes that I made, like uh, uh, the front brakes, the pedal changes, the master cylinder changes, uh, the changes on the clutch. Uh, so, uh, like for instance, I have to change out the master cylinders for everything, for the clutch and the brakes, because even though I had changed the pedals out and I improved the pedal ratio from about three and a half to one to 5.3 to one, uh, what that means is, is that there is less travel at the piston in the master cylinders, which means there's less volume of oil, of oil or brake fluid, what have you, into the pistons, both for the brakes and for the slave cylinder on the transmission which means they're not as effective. The, the flip side is you have greater leverage over those things, but that also means the, tr the brake pedal travel is significantly more. I'll sort of, uh, I'll, I'll come back to those later when I readdress them. Uh, I need to change the master cylinders out because I was too conservative with my uh, sort of guesstimate, I guess. And so um, I have two on the shelf. I have a third one coming in for our clutch, so we'll have to revisit that stuff. We'll also revisit uh, all the wiring up here to get that all sorted out and, and beautified. I do have to say that uh, the power steering is a dream. Just in wheeling it around parking lots and pushing it by hand and just having power steering on, uh, that was worth 
all of the trouble and even the hole we had to cut into the dash to get that to fit and make that work. Um, I would a thousand percent recommend uh, just the addition of power steering to any builder for these cars. It's hard to express how much easier and better it drives, uh, but I'm sure I'm going to comment on that more in the future. So, yeah, with the run-up to this, kind of run-up to the dyno, and then this sort of dyno decompression talk. I kind of wanted to explain a little bit where I'm at, where the car's at. I know things have been jumping around a little bit because of this just crush to finish. And I kind of feel like I, sh I shortchanged you guys on the build on uh, some specific items. And... I think I'll probably go back and revisit some of those in in later videos. Um, especially one thing that I do want to rehash is sort of the uh, the electrical and um, how the ECU, the PDM, and uh, uh, our motorsport sensors all sort of work together. Um, there's definitely more info to be had there. And I feel like I didn't really dive into that enough. Uh, and so um, I do want to revisit that as well. So um, for now, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.